Morocco has a very ambitious program uh, of uh, uh, green transition and uh, it has uh, great conditions to do this transition in a very successful manner. In terms of financing, uh, we are extending uh, loans and green loans to Morocco so that uh, the Mazen, uh, ONCF, uh, to, uh, to all the companies uh, that uh, are moving forward this green transition, being in on the production side of the energy, being on uh, energy efficiency, being uh, on uh, soft transportation, have uh, the amount of funding they need. Uh, when it comes to SMEs, we need to go through financial intermediaries, and that's uh, the work we are doing, not only extending financing and risk-carrying instruments, but also technical assistance so that the financial intermediaries can reach the SMEs and uh, support them in doing this journey uh, where SMEs are uh, uh, more vulnerable and uh, less prepared. And there, the financial intermediaries have a very important role. Uh, and I know that uh, from the public authorities, uh, the central bank is uh, looking now at uh, this uh, climate risks in a, a very serious manner, uh, which is something that uh, we have also, and uh, it's also some issue that uh, we are looking at. Uh, uh, many central banks in Europe and across the world are looking at this. So Morocco, it's in the forefront of uh, this uh, assessment of risk also of the projects. Look, I think that this crisis, uh, in fact, is fast forwarding uh, the green transition. At least it should, all the incentives are in place. Like during COVID, uh, we have uh, the mm, fastest advance in the digital transition we observed. So uh, it moved much faster than many years of policies because when the needs come, People react immediately, both public and private sector. And uh, the way I see this crisis is that uh, this crisis transforms something that was a priority into something that is an emergency. Now we, are, we need to do the transition not only for considerations related to climate and the sustainability, but also of a strategic autonomy of the countries, not being dependent. And in, in this respect, Morocco is very well advanced. So uh, your uh, mix of uh, renewables and in particular wind power in your uh, energy mix is well above uh, natural gas. So this creates perfect conditions for the country not to be so dependent on the, this type of shocks still. It's, of course, a quite big impact in the economies, and the governments are uh, dealing with this. And uh, we keep supporting uh, uh, countries and uh, policies that allow us to move faster uh, in, the, in this green transition. But I see it as an incentive for moving faster, and it's happening. Well, I hope that uh, this not happen, but uh, uh, the way we see this is that uh, we are financing investments. These investments take quite some time, as was explained. Uh, investment in uh, any gas pipelines takes uh, five to seven years to be implemented. We are targeting a green transition that is moving towards net zero by 2050. So this means that any investments regarding infrastructures fully devoted to being natural gas or any type of fossil fuels will become stranded in the middle of the process. So we'll be not viable from a financial and economic point of view. So that's why in our energy lending policy, we favor all infrastructures that uh, are ready to transport uh, low carbon gas. And that's uh, where we're focused. And uh, what uh, we are looking at is infrastructures that uh, can be used, being it for uh, low carbon uh, gas like uh, like hydrogen, and uh, we think that's the future, and that's where resources should be invested in order to target uh, a transition that is sustainable and to avoid that uh, uh, companies are financing assets that uh, will not live for all his technical possible life and become stranded in the middle, being uh, sunk costs uh, and uh, inefficient for the countries and uh, bad use of uh, uh, the, of the resources.